All right, now, what we're looking at here is two-way tables and tree diagrams. Okay, you should be able to remember these from being, doing them before. So, two-way tables and tree diagrams. Why do we have them? When there are multiple events, we need to find other ways to arrive at probability. It's not as simple as just putting the outcomes over the possible outcomes. All right, with favorable outcomes over the possible outcomes. So, an example of a multiple event would be rolling three fives in a row or getting at least two heads out of three attempts. So, the examples we're going to look at are going to be as simple as possible. The first thing we're going to look at are our two-way tables where there are only two events. All right, so two events, we use two-way tables. Let's take a look at an example here. So, you flip a coin twice, show all the probabilities. The first flip would be event one, the second flip would be event 2. So we're going to lay them out in the cute little table where coin 1 is my first flip and coin 2 is my second flip. My two outcomes that are possible are heads and tails on coin 1 and heads and tails on coin 2. So if I flip the coin and I get heads and heads, then I fill in that little block, heads and heads. If I get heads and tails, then I get heads and tails. So the first coin got me a heads, the second coin gave me tails, so I fill that in. If I were to get a tails first and then a heads, that would go in there. And the last one, we have two tails in a row, so tails, tails. You can see there are four possible outcomes, three of which are unique. Double heads, double tails, and heads and tails in any order. If you were looking for a specific uh, order, so heads first, then tails, then there's, uh, then there are four unique events, okay? Order of things does count here. Okay, so if we look at the probabilities, the probability of uh, double heads is one out of four possibilities, okay? That would give you your 0, 0,25 or your 25%. The probability of tails, tails, exactly the same, one event out of four, or one outcome out of four is favorable and so that's that. With the heads tails, if I'm not being particular about it, it's two out of the four possibles. So 50% of the time I will get my favorable outcome. So it's half the time. Okay. It's usually the reason why we say if you're trying to win a coin toss, we do it uh, best out of three. Because if you do it best out of two, there's still a possibility there'll be a 50% chance of you losing or winning, okay, because you're looking for the heads, heads, or the tails, tails. But that won't work with one of these tables, so you're going to have to look at something different. So now, if there are more than two events, so as I said, our best out of three situation, we cannot use a two-way table. In this case, we use a tree diagram. Each event will, will lead to branches showing the possible outcomes of each event. When completed, the tree diagram will show us all the combinations of outcomes, all right? All combinations of outcomes. That's just a simple little point of how the branches will branch out there for you. You can see the first set is the first event, the second set is the second event, and the third set is the third event, and how our outcomes go off. So let's take a look at our example. You're going to make a hot drink for a visitor, and you've got two options, tea or coffee, with or without milk, with or without sugar. Okay, so I'm going to fill in a little table here. It might look complicated at first, but we'll look at it. So there's a 50% chance that you could have tea or coffee. So it's one and two and one and two. Then in either case, milk is a 50% chance, no milk is a 50% chance. Obviously, we're using the most simple sort of equally likely events here. Then sugar and no sugar is also a 50% chance or half. Because uh, there are two options there. Okay. If we look at our outcomes then, if someone was looking at tea, milk, and sugar, then you've only got one out of the eight full possibilities. So, as you can see, there are eight possible outcomes in total. Therefore, the probability of any of these is one over eight. There's no possibility that you can have some sort of crossover or anything else. They're all unique events because the coding of the outcomes, the TMS or TMNS, etc., they're all very unique. Okay, 
Now, let's take a look at a second example. You toss a coin three times because you're trying to win an argument with someone. So, there is our heads and tails situation. The first flip, you've got a 50-50 on the heads or the tails. The second flip can still go heads or tails. It doesn't really matter if you got heads first in the first toss, they're unaffected. And then the third toss, once again, not affected. Now, if we look at our outcomes, we have got eight outcomes. Each individual outcome has a probability of one in eight, but for some of these outcomes, the probabilities are higher. Okay, why do I say this? Because it depends on the order that someone is looking for. Two heads and a tail in that specific order, there's only one of them, H-H-T, okay, heads, heads, tails, there's one in eight. But if you don't care about the order, two heads and a, and a tail in any order, heads, heads, tails, we actually have three of them because there's double heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, and tails, heads, heads. In this case, if you were betting on heads, you would have a three in eight chance, okay? That's a three, 37 and a half percent chance or 0 0.35 uh, probability that you would have there. So it can go either way, all right? Uh, if you were looking to win on your third throw, then if you were going for heads, you could possibly throw in your triple heads as well. That would give you four over eight, so you have a 50% chance. Okay, moving on. Now we can look at something a little bit more complicated. You have three pairs of red socks and five pairs of black socks. All the socks are loose in a drawer because you've been lazy and you haven't put them together. You pull out one sock at a time randomly and replace it three times. Okay, it's not like you're looking for a pair but you're just gonna put it back in there, okay? This is to illustrate the point. The first thing to note here is that because I have three pairs of, of red socks, the R will have six over 16 because I have six individual socks. The black socks, I have five pairs, so that gives me 10 individual socks. Six and 10 added together gives me 16. That's why I've got six out of 16 and 10 out of 16. This could also be expressed as 3 over 8 and 5 over 8, but the, to illustrate my point here, it's more important to be able to see that the 16 socks will always be in the draw. So it doesn't matter what happens. Every single time I go along here, I've still got 16 pet, um, socks in the draw. So at the end, we still have 6 over 16 and 10 over 16 for each of the branches. Because each of the outcomes, getting red or black socks, are not equally likely, this changes how we calculate the probability. So, if you want a specific set of socks. Okay, so two red socks in a row. We would need to multiply the individual probabilities together. Remember the probability of getting a, a pair of red socks, or one of the red socks, is six over 16. So we're gonna take six over 16 times six over 16. That's gonna give you 36 over a very large number. When simplified, it comes to nine over 64, or a 14,06% chance. Okay, you can always experiment with this yourself. Okay, if we want to get the probability of selecting a red sock and then a black sock, we would need a multiply or multiply the individual probabilities together too. So, in this case, the probability of getting a red sock is 6 over 16, the probability of getting a black sock is 10 out of 16. When multiplied together, you get 15 over 64 or 23,44%. You'll see it's much more likely that you're going to get a mixture of the socks than you are to get just two red socks in a row. Funny enough, we are only looking at two events in a row. Okay, but anyway, if we want the probability of selecting a red sock and two black socks, so basically you're looking for a pair of black socks. All right, so I pull a red sock out. Ah, no, I want a black sock. So I pull out another sock. It's now a black sock, and then I pull out another black sock, fantastic. That needs to be multiplied by three because we have three possible outcomes that we include that order. Okay, it's 225 over 512, so 43.95% of the chance, yeah, you're almost 44% chance of getting that specific sequence of socks. Okay. Then, 
There are three outcomes that satisfy this because it requires our favorable results. That's why we multiply it by three because I could have red, black, black, I could have black, red, black, or I could have black, black, red to satisfy that solution there. Okay, example number four, a little bit different. You have three pairs of red socks and five pairs of black socks, exactly the same as previously, but when you pull them out, you are not going to replace them because this is a more realistic example. You're looking for a specific pairs of so pair of socks. So now, if you pull out a, a red pair of socks or a red sock, the next time you look, you're going to have only five red socks left, not six, but you'll still have 10 of the black socks in the drawer. So altogether you have 15 socks together. So it's five over 15 and 10 over 15. If you pull out another red sock, you will have four red socks left behind and still 10. So it's four out of, out of 14 and 10 out of 14. And if you follow all the lines there, you will also see the similar thing is happening. Like if you follow the black socks, if you pull that black sock in the first pull, the next row will have only nine black socks in it. Because of this, they are not equally likely. It also changes how we calculate our probability here. Okay, so if we want the probability of once again pulling two red socks in a row, we need to multiply the individual probabilities together. Because I am not replacing them, it changes the result. So now I've got 6 out of 16 and 5 out of 15. All right. And because of this, you have a 1 in 8 chance. Okay. A 12.5%. Remember the first time we looked at this, you had a 14% chance or more than 14%. Now it's down to 12.5%. Because there are less red socks for you to pull out in the second time. If you want the probability of selecting a red sock and then a black sock, we also need to multiply these individual probabilities together. So, once again, 6 out of 16, but now 10 out of 15. It's more likely that you're going to pull a black sock out because there are more black socks uh, in the drawer than there are red socks. So, that probability changes. So, now we've got to a quarter or 25% of pulling out our red and then black sock. Okay. We're going to look at one of our other ones again. If we were pulling out two red socks, or one red sock and two black socks, sorry about that, and you want to multiply the individual probabilities together of each of those parts, yes, this looks complicated, but we have to look at the situation of all three parts. The first one is looking at pulling out a red sock, then a black sock, and then a black sock again. That's why we've got the six, and then the ten, and the nine. All right. The second one's looking at pulling out a black sock first, then pulling out a red sock, and then pulling out a black sock again. And then the third one, you're looking at pulling out a black sock, a black sock, and then a red sock. If we multiply all of these probabilities together, you're going to get 27 out of 56, or 48,21%. Okay. This, this does get a little bit complicated, and you have to figure out all the branches, but it is a far more realistic sort of situation. So, just to recap, two-way tables and tree diagrams. These are both used for multiple events. Two-way tables are used when you only have two outcomes that you are looking at, whereas tree diagrams, you are looking at when there are three events, so multiple outcomes happening. All right. You can have two-way tables that are a lot bigger, where there are far more um, outcomes, such as when you are rolling two dice, that would result in 36 outcomes, right? And tree diagrams can get fairly hairy as well, but let's just keep them to the simple ones. Okay, so I hope that helps and stay safe. Thank you.